I'd like to welcome you all to our Founders Day Assembly for 2020. I particularly welcome our Year 11 students, many of whom will be returning to us for their sixth form studies, but for some, this marks their official leaving day from Hitchin Girls School. I also warmly welcome Year 13, for whom this is the last day of your time at HGS, and I'm very sad that we're not all able to be together, dressed in our best and saying our farewells in person. For all of you who are leaving us, I wish you the very best in your next endeavours and would ask that you remain in contact with us because we really do like to know what you all end up doing in life. I also welcome Year 7. This is your first experience of Founders Day and you will quickly realise this is a very important event for us at Hitchin Girls School. In more normal times, today we would be gathering at school for assemblies followed by Year 11 and 13 processing down Hollow Lane to St Mary's Church in Hitchin, where we meet with Hitchin Boys School for a celebration and remembrance of the founders of our two great schools. Year 11 would be dragging out their uniform for the last time, and Year 13 would be dressed in their finest following leave of supper, which would have taken place yesterday evening. Today marks a moment in the school's history as I cannot find any record of an occasion where Founders Day has not taken place, even during the Second World War, and it is most certainly the first time that we've ever held Founders Day remotely, like this, with the whole school able to take part. So whilst we're not all together today here in school for assembly, it will be as close as it would be if we were. So a little about the history of Founders Day. In 1932, Miss Chambers, head teacher at the time, conceived the idea of a regular Founders Day to be held at St Mary's Church in Hitchin in conjunction with the Boys' Grammar School. It is the day when we gather to remember and give thanks to the founders and benefactors of both Hitchin Girls and Hitchin Boys schools. The first Founders Day took place in July 1932, 88 years ago. And the only record of the first service is a photograph of a very wet day with a few umbrellas and a lot of wet girls. The format for Founders Day is virtually unchanged from that first year. The girls walk down the hill to the church and the boys process through the town to the church. The girls enter by one door with their teachers and the boys by the other. Following a fanfare composed by a student of the hosting school, the head teachers of both schools process into church with their respective head, head girl and head boy and their chairs of the governing bodies of their schools to celebrate a service which is the formal leaving event for our outgoing Year 13 students and for Year 11. Traditionally, in church, a list of names of the two schools' founders and benefactors is read out and in our assembly before we walk down to church, prize winners of awards are announced and celebrated. Historically, the afternoon has usually been taken up with sports day or swimming competitions when the school had its own pool. Although one year, a Midsummer Night's Dream was staged in the evening and another year, an open day was held for parents. In the early days of the Founders Day service, the whole school would attend, but by the end of the 1970s, only the senior students could be accommodated in the church. As the school continued to expand, we now take our Year 13 and 11 students to church, along with our Year 12 prefect team. The current format of Founders Day, with the sports day and stalls in the afternoon, has been the tradition of the school since 1979. The next part of the Founders Day Assembly is the announcement of prize winners for the year 2019 to 2020. And these are usually announced at Leaver's Supper, which would have taken place last night. In the spirit of this tradition, the winning students were telephoned last night and informed of their prizes. These prizes have been nominated by staff and they also write words for the recipient. The first prize is the Helen Porter Award for a student making excellent progress in biology. This annual award is given to a Year 11 student by the parents of former student of Hitchin Girls School, Helen Porter, in memory of their daughter. This year's award winner has shown commitment, dedication and enthusiasm for biology throughout her two years studying GCSE. Her quiet determination and passion for the subject means that she has been consistently working significantly above her target throughout. She's an excellent biologist. With her work ethic and talent, she will go from strength to strength 
in whatever she puts her mind to in the future. The winner of the Helen Porter Award for Biology is Gina Hall in 11F. Our next prize is the Rand Award for a student giving outstanding service to the school. And this year, the award goes to Rebecca Turner in 13B. Rebecca has undertaken many community roles, both within school and outside in the community throughout her years at Hitchin Girls School. She's been a charity prefect on a number of occasions, and as part of her role, raised £2,160 for Macmillan Cancer Support through a sponsored event in which she shaved off all her hair. She has organised and run other charity events in school, including the very popular Slime and Teacher, and Becca is also a regular volunteer during the food drives, not only bringing food, but also helping with the organisational aspects. Within her form, she coordinated the form quiz, motivated her peers when they struggled, and remained an incredibly positive and optimistic person, even when she was having to juggle a lot of things. Whenever anyone needs help with anything, Becca is always the first to offer, and that, that is why she's the ideal candidate for the Rand Award. She's an absolutely delightful young woman who encompasses exactly what it means to be a Hitchin Girls School student. So congratulations, Becca, on being awarded the Rand Award this year. We then move to the Frank Ellis Award for Chemistry, which is presented in memory of Frank Ellis, a former governor of the school, to a student who has shown herself to be an outstanding chemist. This year's winner has consistently impressed both her chemistry teachers right from the start of Year 12. She's a very diligent and conscientious student who has a tenacious attitude to learning, particularly the finer points of the course. On the rare occasion when she has stumbled, she picks herself up and tries even harder. It's been an absolute pleasure to teach her, and we wish her every success in the future. And the Frank Ellis Award for Chemistry goes to Charlotte Bishop in 13B. Our next award is the Beryl Weirmouth Award for Citizenship. This award is presented to someone who has given to the community or been involved in an impressive citizenship activity. It is presented in memory of Mrs Beryl Weirmouth, former Chair of Governors of the school. This year, the award is being presented to three students who have all supported their local community in very different ways, making it impossible to choose between them. The first recipient is Lucy Williams in 13B. Lucy has been an outstanding Army cadet during her time at HGS, progressing to achieve the highest honour as the Hertfordshire Lord Lieutenant's Cadet last year. In this role, she gives of her time freely and willingly, supporting events and representing the county, whilst working on the Hitchin, at the Hitchin Cadet Group as a leader and role model. Lucy has also continued to volunteer weekly as an ambassador at White Hill Junior School, where she's been an outstanding example to the Year 6 students, and was valued so highly that she was asked to accompany them on school trips. She's such a quiet and unassuming student, but if you need someone for a job, no matter how menial, Lucy is your girl. She also has a wicked sense of humour and is a real pleasure to work with. The second recipient is Madeline Hurley in 13T. Madeline gives much of her time to refereeing and coaching and has been instrumental in developing initiatives for change in local youth football. She's a Level 7 football referee for which she's won medals and trophies and has put her Level 1 coaching award into practice with the Purton Wildcats, who won the Play on the Pitch award, which Madeline was interviewed about at Wembley. Madeline also won the Hertfordshire FA Rising Star of the Year award in 2019, has been a young sports reporter for the Comet newspaper and spent four days at the FA Leadership Academy, a fantastic programme developing young leaders to help them create a voice in football and improve their leadership skills. Since then, she's volunteered at Hertfordshire FA, working on to improve youth integration and creating a youth forum and social media account with them. Madeline's also an assistant coach at her local athletics club and trains and competes to a high level in athletics herself. Her passion, commitment and initiative in developing sport in the local community and beyond is outstanding. Congratulations, Madeline. The third recipient, recipient of this award is Charlotte Bishop in 13B. Charlotte is another quietly lovely student who is incredibly reliable. She has volunteered within her village of Hexton to support a local organisation which helps the elderly and is involved in helping them to meet and do craft. 
She's also a real advocate for those with dementia, helping to set up the letter writing to care homes with HGS students, and last year, jumping out of a plane with a parachute to raise money for an Alzheimer's charity. Charlotte is also the first to volunteer to support the local food drive each term, and can be relied upon to rally the troops with her quick wit and drive. Congratulations to all three winners of the Beryl Weir Mouth Award for Citizenship, Charlotte Bishop, Madeline Hurley and Lucy Williams. Now we move to the Cathy Taplin Award for a student showing great promise in art. This is presented in memory of Cathy Taplin, a former student of the school. Since joining us in Year 7, this student has consistently put terrific effort into her artwork, both in school and through additional classes and competitions. Since GCSE, she's regularly helped the department by attending events, supporting fellow students and staff, and her artwork is exceptional and will continue to develop as she pursues her study beyond school. The Cathy Taplin Award for Art goes to Lily Sidey in 13A. The Wendy Fitzgerald Award for Outstanding Achievement in English is next. The winner of this award is an English student who really stands out and has been since she started in Year 7. She has a natural, original flair for the subject, from her creative writing to thought-provoking essay writing, and her work is always guaranteed to be a genuine pleasure to read. This flair is matched by her quiet yet passionate enthusiasm and passion for the subject she loves. English is this student's subject, and we are delighted that she's chosen to continue with her studies at university, where we have no doubt she'll be in her element. The Wendy Fitzgerald Award for English goes to Lily Coleman in 13F. We now move to the Hendy Cup. The Hendy Cup is an annual mathematics award presented to acknowledge the impact that Mrs Anne Hendy has had on the school, the mathematics department and the thousands of students who she has taught and supported. It is presented to a student who has not only distinguished themselves mathematically, but also has contributed to the promotion of mathematics within the school. This year the decision has been a very tough call as there were several outstanding candidates. The winning student has made valuable contributions to the mathematics department and to individual students, whilst excelling in her own subject knowledge and problem solving ability. She has an unrelenting work ethic and will persist with problems until she understands the correct methods and solutions. As a Maths Ambassador, she has supported students at Key Stage 4, regularly working with Year 7 students in the Weekly Times Table Club, and has assisted other girls on a one-to-one -one basis throughout her time in the sixth form. There are many people in the school who have benefited from her generosity. She gives her time, friendship and knowledge selflessly. She has really contributed to raising the profile of mathematics within the school. The winner and a worthy recipient of the Hendy Cup this year is Elizabeth Chapman in 13J. The next two awards are given in memory of Margaret Warwick, former head teacher of the school. The first is the Margaret Warwick Geography Award for Outstanding Achievement in Geography. The winner of this award is an outstanding geographer who regularly engages in classroom discussions, applying her knowledge and understanding effectively. She asks good questions and has always sought out additional support when it was needed. Having not done GCSE geography, she persevered at A-level and showed real resilience when things were challenging. Her NEA, investigating flood risk on the River Ouse around Bedford, was truly exceptional. It achieved the highest mark in the cohort and was worthy of undergraduate level credit. The Margaret Warwick Award for Geography this year goes to Cecily Austin in 13C. Well done, Cecily. This award is a testament to your positive attitude and approach. Good luck in your next steps at university. Our next award is the Margaret Warwick Music Award for Outstanding Achievement in Music. Since arriving at HGS, this student has been a musician of great quality. Her dedication to viola practice has been exceptional and her ability has been recognised through admission to ensembles of the highest calibre. Throughout this time, she has remained a committed and supportive member of the HGS music community and has reliably attended rehearsals and concerts and worked with chamber ensembles. She's a role model and an inspiration to her peers and younger students and has raised the standard of music during her time at Hitchin Girls. 
the Margaret Warwick Music Award is presented to Emily Clark in 13B. Our next award is the Mary Bacon Award for Gym and Dance, for a student making an outstanding contribution to the development of gymnastics and dance across the school. This award is made in memory of Mary Bacon, who died four years ago and who loved to dance. The student gaining this award has been an inspiration in the promotion of gymnastics and dance throughout her time at HGS. She has been a member of Advanced Gym Club from the very first term in Year 7, where she has been an excellent role model. She's a member of Senior Dance Club and has also represented the, the school at County Dance Festival. Despite being a keen dancer, however, gymnastics is her first love. Her creativity is second to none, and she's been known to bring in images of advanced balances that even produced a sharp intake of breath from Mrs Maiden. She's often heard to say, it's okay, we can do this, and usually they could. She's also dedicated many years to leading both Year 7 Gym Club and Intermediate Gym Club, where she's volunteered well over 100 hours of time to produce sequences with younger members of the school. Their respect for her coaching and gymnastics ability is evident in every club session. The winner of the Mary Bacon Award is Tegan Kane in 13T. We are sorry that Tegan, along with our other Year 13 dancers and gymnasts, will not this year be able to compete and appear in the final gym and dance display for us all. However, her legacy will live on at HGS and her contributions to gym and dance will be observ observable for many years to come. In this assembly, we have the formal inauguration of our new house captains and prefect body. I would usually present our head girl, deputies and house captains with a voucher as a small token of our appreciation for the work and service that they have given to the school. This year, these have been posted to them with my very grateful thanks. The final duty of the outgoing head girl, Kristen Knight, would be to carry out her last official duty in school to present the head girl's badge to our new head girl for 2021, and that is Tamika Brewster. I would like to thank Kristen on behalf of you all for her amazing support to the school and to the staff. She's represented Hitchin Girls School at all of our public events, at governors' meetings, and has led the team of prefects very professionally. Her support has been greatly appreciated. Now to our deputy head girls. The deputies are appointed to support the head girl in the enormous amount of work which she undertakes and to be further ambassadors to the school. I would like to thank our outgoing deputy head girls, Charlotte Bishop and Martha Riley, who hand over their roles to our new deputy head girls, Freya Edmondson and Imogen Cannell. I would also like to thank our house captains for their hard work over the course of the year. Our outgoing house captains, for Austin House, Mary Hallahan is succeeded this year by Hayworth Harrison. For Bronte House, Rebecca Turner is succeeded by Grace Byrne. For Curie House, Ramaja Anantharaja is succeeded by Tabby Wheeler. For Pankhurst House, Karis Holloway is succeeded by Anya Patel. For Frank House, Charlotte Langrish is succeeded by Shai Maruramurugan. For Jewel House, Anna Tomlinson is succeeded by Olivia Truscott. For Rosa House, Daisy Greetham is succeeded by Abby Saunders. And for Teresa House, Tegan Kane is succeeded by Izzy Davis. I would now like to welcome our new Prefect team for 2020-21, again by House. The outgoing Prefect body for Austin House are Tiana Permasa and Molly Robb, and they are succeeded by the Deputy House Captain for Austin, Megan Ellen Woodward, and Health and Sports Prefect, Rachel Needham. The outgoing Prefect body for Bronte House are Freya Slaney Parker and Freya Burnett, and they are succeeded by Deputy House Captain, Skylar Pereira, and Health and Sports Prefect, Anna Mia. The outgoing Prefect body for Curie House are Daisy Ann Collins and Eliza Burgess. They're succeeded by Deputy House Captain for Curie, Amelia Stanya, and Health and Sports Prefect, Rachel Young. 
The outgoing prefect body for Frank House are Lily Coleman and Aurora Duncan. They are succeeded by their deputy house captain, Rosina Greenham, and health and sports prefect, Bluebell Cook. The outgoing prefect body for Jewel House are Phoebe Murray and Yana Tutt. They are succeeded by deputy house captain, Kira Hoban, and health and sports prefect, Estelle White. The outgoing prefect body for Teresa House are Rosie Marsh and Petra Siduade, and they are succeeded by Deputy House Captain Belle Edmonds and Health and Sports Prefect Jenna Edwards. The outgoing prefect body for Pankhurst House are Evelyn Finch and Cecily Austin, and they are succeeded by Deputy House Captain Jasmine Holder and Health and Sports Prefect Freya Park. The outgoing prefect body for Rosa House are Catherine Baxter-Jones and Karina Hare, succeeded by Deputy House Captain Alex Hill and Health and Sports Prefect Beth O'Callaghan. There are additionally six school council representatives in Year 12 who are also part of the senior prefect body. The outgoing school council prefects will present their badges to the incoming team next term. Outgoing school council prefects are Lily Brewster, Elizabeth Chapman, Megan Lister, Swasti Mitra Mastafi, Zoe Ogunode and Georgia Vermeeren. School council reps for this year are Isabel Spence, Katie Feek, Leah Harris and Namel Fatima. Many congratulations to our new prefects on their appointment and many thanks to our outgoing prefect teams for all their hard work and their contributions to the school. It's also traditional at this assembly to announce the names of staff who will be leaving us this term. So the staff that are leaving are Miss Manrique, who has been working as an intervention tutor, Mrs Austin, who has worked in reception for many years, Miss Reevey, learning support assistant, Miss Crow, learning support assistant, Miss Hardy in the English department, Mr Crowley in music, Mrs Cameron, who has been covering Mrs Arnott's maternity leave in science, Mrs Cave, Head of Learning Support and our SENCO, and Mrs Bridge in Maths. I would like to extend our sincerest thanks to them all for their dedication and commitment to the school and to you, the students. I hope that you've enjoyed this Founders Day Assembly in what are very different times for us all. We will finish today, as I do each year, with a short prayer. This prayer is known as the Irish Blessing and we make this for all our leaving students and staff, and also for our absent friends. In the current situation, where we are not able all to be together on this special day, it seems particularly appropriate. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.